Come on, update, please. Thank you. Preview. Okay, good. That's what I want to see. Um. Not, <clears throat> not familiar enough with this. the heck is the studio? Oh, whatever. Uh, shite. Whoops. No, let's, let's not be over here. <clears throat> oh, right. I should do that first. Uh. Alright, so that's sorted out, so, um, well, we'll just switch off over to here, get out of that. Okay, well, uh, today I'm going to be doing something a little different for you guys, so I get a drink of water here. Mm. So, this is Adobe After Effects CS5. And what I'm going to show you today is how to do lightsabers. Interesting. So, um, this is going to be basically a full-ish tutorial for the most part. Uh, as basically, uh, I want to show the basics of how to do it and uh, beyond, more or less. And this VFX corner thing... I don't know if it'll it'll be an occasional thing. I think uh, I don't think there's really going to be a dedicated day for it going forward, but maybe an occasional Saturday thing if I don't have anything else going on or if I just feel like it. So uh, let's get this party started. So assuming this is assuming you know Bupkis about After Effects, about how nothing at all on how to work with it, how to do anything. Uh, in the slightest, and you want to slap lightsabers in your whatever, your YouTube video or your fan film, or just have a, just having a couple of dudes smacking each other in the face with baseball bats or whatever. So, for starters, let's import some footage, and I've got plenty. And this, let's see, um, I wonder which one I should even use. And this will be a little preview for you guys who know about, uh, who have at least heard about a project I've been doing that's not mod-related, well, this is it. At least the raw footage of it. I think maybe... Yeah, I'll find something here. Uh, let's see. Maybe some blooper or something? I just need to find some good, solid footage here. Eventually. Uh, la, 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 la. If I can't find anything I feel was suitable, then I'll... Okay, here we go. This, look, this looks good. Get all Obi-Wan in here. So we've got our uh, footage right here. So I'm going to drop that into... I'm going to click, hold, and drag. I'm going to bring it down to this little film strip deal right here. That's the composition button. So that'll automatically drop it into a composition. There's old Obi-Wan. Hey, man. Looking pretty good there. And so we've got the we've got his lightsaber here, and we got the reference pole. If you're going to do a 
like a film or anything like that, you need something like this if for like sustained battles or whatever. You can get away with not having a pole if you're doing just like an ignition ignition sequence, but we'll get to that. So we've got our we've got our footage here, uh, and I'm gonna lock it because uh, I'll get to it in a moment. So we've got our footage; it's locked. It's everything. I'm gonna save. Pre I reset I preset this up. So layer up to the layer new solid. If you're at all familiar with the methods of doing it, um, this should be familiar. Just, you know, a new solid, make it white, make sure it's the composition size. You don't really need to lock the aspect ratio because it'll automatically be the aspect ratio of the uh, composition. So, uh, we just hit OK. And so we've got ourselves a blinding white solid. Not very useful, but pluck, pluck its eye out. So now we go up to the pen tool, right up here, pen. And we're just going to draw a four-point mask around Obi-Wan's blade here. One, two, three, four. And then connect it. Four-point masks, I find, are easier to work with because you only have to move four points if you're rotoscoping. Uh, and we'll get we'll get into that uh, sorted affair in a moment. So we've got it covering covering the blade and should be meeting things appropriately. So I'm gonna turn the eye on so you can see how it looks there. It's kind of a it's it's a it's there. It's white. It exists. So we're gonna come down over to here and we wanna untwirl these triangles. So we've got like this, click that, it'll twirl down so you can see the masks and transform uh, thingies, uh, entries or whatever. So you twirl down the mask button, the mask triangle, and that'll show the mask that you've just made, mask one. And it's set to add, so twirl that down. And since we want to do motion, it's not like a static image, he's just not going to be standing there infinitely all the time. We want to hit the stopwatch right here by mask path. So what that'll do is that sets a keyframe. And you know what? Going forward... Yeah, uh, hang on. Uh. I'm gonna... To make it easier on myself, I'm gonna trunk, trim the footage a little bit here. Because I want to show motion as well. So I'm gonna... Right here should be good. So, I'm going to un go and unlock this footage layer. Doot. And, actually, you know what? Hang on. If you want to trim, you hold Alt and hit the bracket, left bracket. And that will trim everything. That will trim everything from this side to the timeline. So, do that. Then you hit Home, and that will bring you to the end, or to the start of the timeline. And then you hit just the left bracket, and that will um, set the footage in alignment with there. So, since we've moved things around a little bit, we need to readjust our mask. So, let's just scoot things over. Let's get old Obi-Wan his death stick. That should be alright. Okay, and then we'll just go back and tick it. Now, what I like to do for uh, lightsaber rotoscoping purposes is changing the mask color. Right now, it's, I think, about the same color as the solid. So, just click that, and it brings up the uh, color palette. And Obi-Wan's lightsaber is blue, so I'm going to make it a blue mask. So, there we go. Now, he's got a blue mask, and we've got our nice solid. And actually, you know what? I'm going to uh, shift things around a little bit. I'm going to move the footage above. Because this is how I do things. Um, I've got the footage above it. I'm going to set the footage to screen. And I'm actually going to... Well, one thing at a time. Set that to screen. I'm going to duplicate the Assad layer. 
I'm gonna lock this. I'm gonna take the mask out. Oops, no, actually, I'm gonna unlock it. Then delete the mask. Then lock it. Uh, oh, no, I don't have this selected. Oh, shit. Solid settings. I'm gonna change it to black. There we go. New. Then we'll lock it. So now we've got a black base layer and a white solid, which is our core. And then we've got the footage up here. So hit save. So now, uh, this is just the basic blade for the lightsaber. So now we get into the interesting stuff. So what I like to do is, I mean, you can do... What you can do is you can just kind of do this. You can go to Mask Feather and like set it to like 3 or something. It really depends upon the distance. And you can add you can add another point, drag it out, hit make it a Bezier, Bezier curve just to kind of give it the appropriate look. So, I mean, that looks okay. But I have a different method of doing things. So, it's really good for if you're trying to speed through this kind of stuff. Just have four points on your mask. I'm going to drag this down a little bit. And I'm going to kill the feather. So we've got that. So now I'm going to go save and make a new adjustment layer. Now move that in above the white solid. So, go up to Effect, Blur and Sharpen, and Fast Blur. And make sure to get the Fast Blur, hit Repeat Edge Pixels, because what that'll do is, if you don't do that, then you see it kind of goes weird. And since we're not, like, blurring this significantly, we don't want to have that gap between the core and the edge of the footage. So we hit that, and that'll extend it uh, to me. So, the uh, let's see. I think for this, 8 will probably do. 8 or 9. So you got that. You've got it blurred up a bit. So now, um, this is what this is where things get interesting. This is so... This is where things get interesting. So there's a way you can auto round a blade, which means that you can have. I'm actually going to bring this down so you can see. Don't don't just ignore that. So you can auto round a blade so that you have a rounded tip and it's kind of rounded down here too. So and that's what this is setting up for this fast blur. So once I save, I'm going to go... Now there's three ways you can do this. I'm going to show you the first way. first way to do the auto-rounding is to pick levels. And it should be you should be fine with it on RGB. If you have this directly on the solid, then you'll want to set it to alpha. But since this is on the adjustment layer, it's fine on RGB. So now here's where the magic happens. We take the this end, this far end, and we shove it off towards the left. What that'll do is that'll fill in the um. It'll it'll fill it'll basically add into the softness that we have, so it makes up for what's been blurred out. And we can crush this down too if we want to uh, eliminate any of the haloing. I kind of like to leave it, leave the haloing, because it adds a little bit to the to the glow when we get to that. But you can also crush it down to just to make it kind of like how it was before. So you can see it it doesn't it didn't work too well up here because this is a much this is a very close angle and it's not all that far away. You will have to adjust these settings um, if the blade's further away. Because when the blade's further away. And the mask is thinner. Whoop. So if I select this side and just push it in, let's say that's like a far away blade, you can see it rounds out more when the mask is closer together like that.
but this wide out it doesn't round it doesn't go completely round so you can fix that by putting another point in Oop, let's see and you can kind of fudge it with without doing a bezier curve it looks a little weird it has like a slight like pseudo point so you can put a bezier curve in to uh sort that out and so you have so you get so you have a nice rounding going on but since his, Obi-Wan's lightsaber goes off screen here, we just push that away, just like so. Just push it off screen. And now I can, I'm going to pull this back in to get that halo back, because I like that halo. It pushes it in a little more. You can also move this middle one to kind of crush things in a little different bit of a direction. Th this also crushes the, crushes the halo, but it doesn't crush it quite the same way as going from black starting from black and going to the right so let's set that back to one Ugh. so we've got obi-wan's blade pretty much in state so i'm gonna turn the layer off and i'm just gonna kind of follow do a little bit of rotoscoping here the uh it's a sluggish process because you have to go frame by frame and depending upon how many frames you got per second it gets a bit um it gets tedious so this is something where you need a lot of time and a lot of patience to do it because you have to go frame by frame and move the mask and we're just getting into some blurring interesting blurring here since he's kind of angling it towards the camera a bit it's not totally two-dimensional, so I'm going to put another point in there to give it a little bit of a slope. So, like, with slight movement, you can get away with moving ahead a few frames, but since, it's kind of, since this is a kind of steady movement, I should be able to get away with it. I may have to come back and adjust a bit to make sure it's not weird and that it's not out of alignment or whatever that should do so we'll just pull this all out whoop, whoop, whoop. Whoop, here we go all right and okay yep yep there we go seeing it just keep following that blade. It's gonna do just a f just until I think it goes uh it goes steady again because I want to show how fanning this is basically how fanning works really because you just move the mask um move the mask over the lightsaber as it's moving. So it that way it move you know it gets the fanning going and everything. So we'll just keep moving things around here until either the blade goes off screen or he stops. Okay. So I think here I can cut the um cut the that extra point out. And another thing I should point this out. It's going into let's see using preferences. Where is it? Preferences um where is it? Okay. Preserve contact constant vertex count while and when editing masks. Uh, you want to have that unticked for this, because, um, that because that way, if you have it off, it allows you to do what I just did. You can have points where there's, you know, you've got these uh points here on the on the mask, and then the next frame you don't have that extra point, 
if you had that ticked, then these would stay all throughout, I believe. And that could screw things up. Because then you'd have to, you'd be stuck moving those points around. Because that way you can add and remove points as you go, as you need them, without having to worry so much, without having to fuss about with um, all those extra points. So, now Obi-Wan's moved his lightsaber, looks like he's moving it off frame. So, we'll just nudge things around a little bit. Hang on. Okay. Still kind of in frame right now. And that comes off. So it's off, it's all off screen, so now I'm going to jump back to the beginning. Turn this on. I'm going to move move this to here. So I don't know if that might not stop it from going past that point, but I don't know. So, yeah, it's it, it, it keeps it in there. So you can see... It moves a little, it's just a little bit up there, but it's okay. It looks a little weird, but in some spots, but I mean, this is probably not something you'd really, only a trained eye would really kind of notice that. Possibly, unless they're doing frame by frame, but in any case. So we've gotten that squared away. Do a save. So, that pretty much covers... Oh, wait, hang on. I was going to say there, I was said earlier that there's three ways to do this auto-rounding. Levels is the first way. The second way is curves. So, once again, that lives in color correction, curves. And you can... It's about the same. It doesn't work as well. You kind of have to fuss it around a little bit. It still can yield the same about, about the same result. But you have to fuss about with it a bit more. It's a little bit... There's a bit more of a learning curve, huh? Ha <laughs> ha. With, um... It's a little bit... Uh... It's not as simple to do as the... As levels. And... The third way is exposure. Right here. So, I like to have the bypass linear light thing ticked. And then you can change the exposure amount push the um to push the brightness of it up and i think offset nope not offset well yes offset maybe offset i don't know about offset let's click that out the gamma yeah you crush the gamma and push the exposure and that doesn't round it as much as levels does but you get kind of the same result and if you have the bypass the bypass linear light having it on or off kind of changes things a little bit. You can see how it looks with it off and how it looks with it on. So that's the three ways of getting the core set up at the very least. So we got that. So now we get into the glow. I'm going to cut. I'm going to take exposure out and just use levels here. So the glow is the glow the glow. So, uh, you can do it, there's two ways you can do the glow. You can do it within this, within the composition here by using adjustment layers. So I'll show you that first. I'm going to duplicate this adjustment layer, which has the side effect of making his uh, blade extra thick. So I'm going to wipe, I'm going to take the levels out. So we're just left with fast blur. And now we want to set the transfer mode of the adjustment layer to screen. So that way it uh, stacks on top of the uh, stacks on top of the core without um so it stacks on it stacks on top of the core and doesn't affect things it doesn't like blur it more because we we don't want to do that so now you want to change the amount the blurriness amount uh to a high-ish setting, depending upon how close the blade is. In this case, maybe 15? Because this is going to be our inner core, inner glow. Our smaller glow. The one, the glow closer to the core. So we got 15, so duplicate that. Uh, 
you you usually do it in like steps of fives or tens. I kind of go all over the place. So like right now I'm going to go 30. And duplicate it again and then go 60. Nah, 70. It's all really in a it's all really about finding the right look. Like what looks what looks correct, what looks good to you. So we got 70 and I'm going to go 100. Since this is like 1080p footage, you kind of have to use you have to use much higher values because it's much larger footage. And so that requires much um much more blurring to get the look you want. So we got 100 and duplicate it again and do 500 and that will give us the much softer outer halo so with the thing with the adjustment layer method you can leave it as it is if you want um if you want a kind of nice bright looking blade like that but you but otherwise you'd want to adjust the opacity of the layers so the stuff closer to the core will be brighter and going outward it becomes dimmer. So for this I think we'll set this to 80. And let's see. Whoops. You can hit T to bring up the opacity, just the opacity um entry. It's much simpler than constantly twirling those twirling those triangles down. This will set to 70, maybe 60. Let's do 60. Uh, let's see, this one's the 71. Oh, there I go again. Uh, this will 50? Yeah. This will do 35. And this one, 20. There. So, it's not, it's not super bright, but... It'll get the job done. So that's the, that's one method of doing, uh doing the blade glow. The other method, I'm going to turn all these off. And the other method which I like to do is I'll take the composition that has the core, drop it into a new... Now for this, what we're going to want to do is I'm going to set this to a guide layer. Because if I had that footage not as a guide layer and I dropped it into a new composition, You'd still have this footage here, and when we do the when I do what I'm about to do, it would affect the footage as well. So the footage itself would probably have to be in its own composition. So I'm gonna drag this into its own comp, and paste the one we modified. Delete that. There we go. And I'm gonna unguide layer this. And whoops, I always do that. Just set that to normal, then tick that. Okay, so here we are all over into our glow um, glow composition. So same principle applies. You duplicate the ba you duplicate the core layer, set the screen, I set it to color dodge by mistake. Screen, please, thank you. And we'll use the same. Uh, where's blur sharpen? Here it is. You can use fast blur or Gaussian Gaussian blur. I fast blur is a bit of a faster effect and you can also change whether it's horizontal or vertical instead of being stuck with Gaussian blurs overall thingy. So once again repeat edge pixels and I'm gonna set this to 15 15 uh, whoops 30 uh, check back on the we did 15, 30, 70, okay, 70, 15, 30, 70, I think it was 100 and 500. So do 100, and then 500. There we go. I think it could probably, whoops, well, we'll see how that goes. So. We've got all that, so we can come over into this composition. 
and it's 23. Drop that in there. Whoops. Set that to screen. So there we go. Got ourselves a nice swanky glow. So, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to, well, I'm not going to turn that on right now. I'll show you how to do the coloring. So coloring the glow is pretty simple. So once again, go up, make a new adjustment layer, and we'll put that in below our footage. Because if we had it above, the coloring would affect the footage as well as the glow. So now there's two ways you can do the glow coloring. Uh, glow, the way to first is you go to color correction and color balance. And you've got this little listing here. You want to tick preserve luminosity. And Obi-Wan's got a blue lightsaber, so hang on. Uh, oh, first things first. So set it. You can set midtones to blue, 100. Highlight blue, 100. Simple. Pretty simple. I mean, it's, but, I mean, if, if this is what you want, then you're done. But you can go a little bit above and beyond here. So this has a little bit of like a purplish to it look to it. So we want to have a little bit of cyan, little little touch of that. So we can add a little bit in the midtones. Now to get cyan and color balance, you just go to the left in the negatives, and that's the opposite. So left would be red, which would make it kind of magenta. Well, I mean, no. Did I say left? I meant right. If you go this way towards the positives, it becomes... It goes to red, and ma that makes it purplish. If you go to the left and go into the negatives, then that gives it a more... That goes into the cyan. So you can... Now, a little touch. I'm going to go to mi minus 30. And then for the highlights, we'll do minus 30 as well. So that gives a pretty nice... Nicer result. Now, you probably notice out in the glow here, you can see how there, it's kind of stair-stepped. You can get around that. It's not really noticeable normally. You're not really going to notice it like all that much, per se. But if you can get around, you can get rid of that by changing this here. I think if you hold control and click on it, no. It's Alt, and you click on it. There, and then that sets it to 16. And so you don't get that... Oop, hang on. You don't get that banding. It's a nice... It's all nice and smooth. So, that's the one... That's... So it's a... Color balance approach is the, the pretty standard way of doing it. And so this pretty much finishes the lightsaber right there. It's got it nice, all nice and blue and stuff. It's all fanning and stuff as it should. But what if you want? What if you go a little bit wilder? You go like, hang on. I've got a number of presets. Let me just load those up. But I have a slew of color presets because you're not like stuck. You're not stuck just like with. Plain old red, plain old blue, plain old green. Like any color, there's various shades and um, shades and forms of each color. So I mean, you've got your standard green, which is yeah, and you've got and you got your magentas and stuff. But you can go a little crazy. So I've got I've got a huge list of different colors here. So like dark red. You know, it's a much more, um, it's, it's red, but it's got more yellowish in there. Now I'm going to go, I'm going to kink out, kid out ugh, kick, uh, kick out all that. I'm going to go and reactivate the adjustment layers so we can wonder why that's not working. Oh, <laughs> duh. So and that's not so great. Probably because of our, um, Opacity adjustments. So I'm probably gonna tweak things a bit. It's going by tens here. 
So that can be 60, and this can be 50. There we go. So when we come back, we've got pretty much about the same result. But, um, the color balance, like I said, was is one way to do it. Another way, there's a plugin by Video Copilot called Vibrance, Color Vibrance, right here. So you can click that in there, and that that yields a pretty okay, res pretty decent result. So remember, obi has got a blue lightsaber. So, and that's that's what you get with the color vibrance effect. It's notably more intense looking. And it, lo it does the job, it certainly works. And you can change, you can choose whether it preserves the luminance or not. And how bright it is, or how not it is. If you want to have like some crap ass looking thing like that. Of course it shows through. That kind of makes it look like a, um, like an 80s effect, doesn't it? So, but I'm going to push that up to 1. And the gamma shifts things around a little bit differently. Make it look all crazy like that. And you can also invert it, which looks a little bit weird too. Um, so that's that's that method. Now, I feel that the glow could use a little bit of fleshing out a bit because you can. It's it's okay. I'm it's okay, but I like to have it. I, what I like to do is I like to um, kind of set, uh, kind of treat lightsabers as their own character. Like instead of having each glow be the same, like having the same settings as the same settings for each one, I like to mix things up a little bit. So like, you know, Obi-Wan here could have his lightsaber with this setup, or it could have a completely different setup. So that's in 100, that's 30. I'm going to duplicate the 31, and I'm going to set it to 50. No, actually, wait, no, never mind. We've got one at 70, I'm going to duplicate that and set it to 95. Just to get like kind of a midpoint, a midish point there, and seventy seventy. This we can set to fifty as well. Oh, actually, wait. <laughs> set that to sixty. All right. Well, bah. I'm gonna. Pick out all of these, all the glows, all the uh, adjustment layers, and switch back to this. I kind of prefer doing it this way than the um, adjustment layer way. But, I mean, you do whatever, where whatever you feel works best for you. <coughs> what I also like to do is for the much um, for the broader glows, the, like the when you get into the 100s and higher, is to turn off the edge pixels. Because um, light tends to kind of, um, it kind of tends to bow in when it gets cut off. So I think, I feel personally it looks a little bit more realistic, but, I mean, you do what you do you. So, I'm going to set this to 95. And I think, 113, I'm going to push this out to about 150. So I like to kind of have it be sort of tapered, sort of have a nice fall off. So we got that. I think we can get rid of this. So we come back, and we've got our color balance. We got that dark red that I had pulled in. So, but now I'm going to show you the third way of coloring, and this is a method I came up with myself because I was getting because I'm. The problem I came with as far as color balance goes is you can see how it affects the glow. You can see it's got this lozenge shape around the blade, and then it goes into the more um, softer outer glow. And I just... it's not terribly noticeable in footage unless it's against a darker background, like like my leg here. I think... no, I think that's my brother's leg. 
So when it when it gets to against a darker background, it becomes more obvious. So uh, this this result bo ended up bothering me. It's not as um it's not as distinct in eight in eight BPC, but you know when you're working in eight BPC, you get this the stair stepping fall off, which again is not something that's too noticeable, but it can stick out sometimes depending upon how um, distinctive the glow color is. So I like working in 16. Um, but the problem is, is that you get this, the lozenging. So what I've devised is I'm going to duplicate the color balance layer. And, you know, I wonder... Oh, wow, what the heck? Well, <laughs> whatever, we'll just leave it at 16. So I'm going to reset the color balance here. And so, again, Obi-Wan's got a blue lightsaber, so going to get a new solid. And let's just find a nice shade of blue. We want kind of a little bit into kind of a skyish blue. Not a solid blue, not a pure solid blue, a little bit more into the sky color. Like so. So we've got that. And we want to put it in underneath our, underneath everything. But we also want to have it underneath the adjustment layer because we're going to be using that layer. So turn that on, and everything looks uh, garish. So we're going to take that blue saw we just made and pick soft light as its transfer mode, and that gives it a pretty nice looking blue glow. I mean, you could just stop right here if that if that milks your Guernsey, but you can still use color balance, make sure preserve luminosity is set, and gussy it up a little bit to make it look prettier. I'm going to throw a little bit of, a little more, a little blue highlight in there. Probably about like maybe, yeah, let's do 40. Put a little bit of cyan highlighting in there. And so you've got yourself a nice, uh, nice blue lightsaber. And what I like about this method is you can kind of see the difference between how it affects the a glow compared to how this affects it. So if we want to use this as a basis, I actually have, I'm actually going to bring up I have a color specifically for Obi-Wan in my tremendous list here. Where is it? Nope. It's down in S. And Sapphire. So you can see kind of how it still has kind of that uh, pill pilling around it. It looks okay, but it still kind of has that. But compared to with the uh, solid set to soft light with color balance kind of picking up the slack, you can see it falls off much more naturally, and it gives it a much nicer, um, more realistic look. Uh, I don't know if I figured out how to uh, get the get the sapphire color in play with this because it has kind of its own look as you can see once I turn this off you know it has kind of a soft it gives it a soft look around the core but so I mean if we want to go back to our dark red so I'm gonna reset this and I'm gonna I'm gonna duplicate the solid so we don't lose it I'm gonna change it to I'm going to turn this, whoop, whoa, okay. I'm going to change this to the dark red, just to show how this can, how this works. Just to give a nice comparison. So this is the dark red uh, color effect using color balance. So, now we'll turn that off and we'll bring this up. And now we're going to change this to, and that was kind of a nice, rich red color. So go up to red, just plain red, 
Well, more down into the orange, to the yellow. So we'll just tip that up a tweak. And we'll bring it down a little bit. So it's a nice, it's kind of a darkish red. So, got that, turn it on. There you go. And so now the key with the dark red is it's got that kind of yellow haloing. So we'll turn that on. And yellow is the negative of blue. So we'll go left on the blue highlights. That'll push some yellow into there. And we can also use green, which will... Green will put a little bit of haloing around the core. So you can use green and yellow in tandem to help accentuate. And I could probably put a touch of yellow into the mid-tones. Let's push that in a bit more. And so there you go. Now we has got a red lightsaber. He's gone Sith. So, but you can see the difference. You know, this is the replicated dark red with the so with the soft light solid, and then that's the dark red with the color balance. So I mean, I when I found this method out, I was like, well, <laughs> I know what I'm using from here on out because it just the results are so much better looking to me at least. So, but, um, let's see here. I'm going to clear this out. And change, get this back to Obi-Wan's proper blue color. Whoops. Now we want to go the other way. We want it to be, we want to have a blue highlighting. We want to have a bit of, a bit of that. We can also use green to get a little bit of haloing around there. So, that's all well and good. So, um, so that that pretty much covers just the general lightsaber doing. Uh, another method for rotoscoping is another. There's another video copilot uh, plugin called Saber, which is right down here, and this has glow. Has the glow all built in already, and you can you know change the change the uh, core size and the softness and stuff like that. It's got a lot of options. Um, I personally don't like working, don't like using it for this kind of work because the problem I have with it is it's got these, it's just got these two points, and you can't move these points um, by using the arrow keys. It just moves the layer, and that's that's a bit of a drawback because you can't do fine tuning with it like you can a mask. Because with a mask point, you can move it with the arrow keys, and so you can get it into you can fine tune it much to a much greater extent. This is just very this is very broad, and so it's much more difficult to get an accurate positioning, but. What this is good for is, well, A, you can use it with masks. Um, let me see if I can remember how to do that. Um, yeah, enable masks. Oh, that's core. Nope. Enable masks. I think that's how it is. Well, um, no, I think there's a blending mode. Yeah, set it to add. There we go. So I mean, you can get it to you can get it to work. Uh, the video copilot has a whole tutorial on how to use this. So, um, if you want to learn how to use this, then you could go look into that. The benefit of it I have found is that um, what it's useful for is for propless uh, stuff. Like if you're doing an ignition sequence or something like that, and there's no prop in the hill, then that's what this really is good for because, you know, you can choose, you can set its perspective and stuff like that, and it has a built-in uh, motion blur um, effect. So if say it's core core start, 
So if I was like this and then moved to the next frame, you see it fans out. So, and that's, this is really useful for, uh, for doing mo movement. Like, it, you have an ignition sequence and the lightsaber's moving during that sequence. This comes in very handy for that because it automatically fills in the, the movement and you don't have to try and work it out going by the motion of the hill. So that's what's it, what it's really useful for, as far as I'm, for me at least. Good. So, at any rate. Now, uh, ooh, yeah, <laughs> turn that back on. Boop, there we go. There you go, Obi-Wan. Now you've got your lightsaber all roundy, as it should well be. So, um, I think, like, one more thing is contact flashes, or lock flashes. Now, um, you can do this, uh, there's a, you can do it a sim very basic way by, um, by just having, like, you just get, like, a new solid, make it a white one. And then get yourself a mask. Just like kind of just do like that or so, and then uh, you can soften it up. Like really soften it up, and then set it to add, not color, to add. Thank you. And then you could probably, and then like um, then duplicate it and. This stuff up. Oh, come on, there we go. Holding from shift control there, and just like bring this out for like a uh, anamorphic lens flare. You can probably also like select this and transform it as well by double clicking on the mask path just to get and get it sort of anamorphic looking. And really soften it up. You can, I can. I'm using the mask feather, but you can use um, you can use the blur effects for it. And I'm gonna select all this stuff again, and I'm gonna just draw. No, not like that. I'm just gonna drag it out. Why did it go like that? I didn't want it to go flat. I want to drag it out. And I think I could probably ease it up a bit as far as its blurring goes. So I mean that looks that looks pretty okay. It's a good quick this is a good quick and easy way to do it. I probably would have done it into a in a separate composition. And you can also like color color balance it uh yellow or yellow orange and probably do some other like glowy effects to give it just to get it in there, just to make it look right. Um, let me see. I'm gonna color, do a little bit of color balancing. Cause usually you want to make contact flashes like kind of like a yellowish red. So is that even working? Oh, kind of. It's not very prominent. Or it's not working at all, I should say. So I'm going to cut and do a new comp, actually, yeah, we'll just do that, we'll just have this guy in here. Where, why isn't that showing up? Oh, it's probably because it's like, it's not all the way at the end, there we go. So I mean, it, it, it works, it's a good, um, this is a good, uh, very simple way of doing it. I think this is the comp we want, yeah. So we set that to add. Then we can, then we should be able to color balance this. Or not? Why ain't it working? What's your malfunction? Probably gonna have to, uh, do an adjustment layer or something. Oh, you know what? That's why it doesn't have a black solid. It's a little, it's weird like that. It, some of these effects don't work unless they have 
Unless there's something black behind it. So now we should be able to get the coloring we want. Where's the color balance? There it is. Preserve luminosity, then get the reds in there. Here we go. Now we're getting, now we're cooking with gasoline. So a good, like, kind of reddish yellow is what you'd want for contact flashes. Uh, let's get yellow in there. So, I mean, that's that works okay. I'd personally, I probably would add more, probably duplicate it and use, like, um, fast blur to give it more of a glow. Just to make it look a little bit less weirdly, f weird fakeness. Get it weirdly fake. But, I mean, for lack of anything else, that works. But what I, what I like to use, and you could also, like, um, actually, no, let's, Let's redo clearing that out. There's also... Um, so I'm going to make a new black solid here. Now this is probably the least advisable. This is the cheap way of doing it. Is Let's see. Stylize, I think? No. Where is it? Ah, you know what? Better idea. Uh, generate lens flare. This is really, like, the lazy man's way of doing it. And this is probably the classic, um, eh way. It's just using, whoops, didn't move the layer. It's just using, like, the stock lens flare effect. effect. It doesn't, I mean, if you don't care, then it's fine. Um, certainly the, certainly these lens flares could be useful in other ways, but it's generally inadvisable to use just the stock lens flare effects, because it, it's kind of obvious and it doesn't look too great. Unless, I mean, unless you think it looks great, then, I mean, that's you. If it looks fine to you, then whatever. But, I mean, it's still just, this is not really the most advisable way of doing things for contact flashes. And what I used, used, not used, is another video copilot plugin which is optical flares. And all three of these, I believe, all three of these are free plugins. Uh and so in optical flares you can build um you can build flares. Um there's a lot of uh presets, but you can build your own flares and I have made go to preset I have made contact flash um flares. I've got a few kinds. There's standard kind kind with an anamorphic uh anamorphic flare and then there's the lock flare which has a blue anamorphic flare. I think I have another one well I think actually I've used that for contact flashes. And so I'm gonna use just this one. So, and anim whether or not it has anamorphic flare is really up to you. If you like how it looks with a anamorphic flare, then then cool. If you don't like how it looks, then whatever. Um, I'm kind of partial to the anamorphic flare look, but I mean I'll use either non. I'll use either flares with the anamorphic flare or without. And this kind, of, this has a nice result to it too. This looks a little bit more. This has having the blue anamorphic, uh, anamorphic flare lends it a bit more of a modern vibe, I guess I'd want to say. But I also, this, I like to use the this kind for locks if two blades are locking against each other. So, like if I were to just quite quickly draw another blade that is coming around over here like it belongs to some ding-dong, then this point would be where, uh, you know, this point would be where it would be locked up on and, you know, sh flickering and flashing and all that sort of good stuff. Now, it occurs to me there's one other thing I'm gonna 
meant one other thing, and that is handling obscurities. Like, if uh, Obi Wan craned his like craned his arm around and his lightsaber went behind his head, well, how would you how would you handle that? Well, again, there's two ways. The first way is by drawing another mask, and we'll just do like this. Like, let's say it's going around. Something, some, some cube has floated in front of his lightsaber. So you draw another mask on the same solid as you have the core layer, and you come down to it and set it to subtract, and that will cut it out. And I like to set the feathering a little bit, like usually around three or so, just to soften things up a little bit, to give like also like a little bit of fall off over the. Um, a little bit of fall off over it. So let's say if I'm I'm gonna move this around. So let's say it's let's say it's behind him. It's actually behind him. And uh you know it's coming around but behind his shoulder. So softening it up a bit will uh give a little bit of fall off and make it look make it look nicer. It, may, it gives it a little bit more like a realistic fall off kind of look, but the drawback to using the mask directly on the layer is if you're using the rounding approach that I described before, you can see it. Uh, if I can click off, there we go. It it'll round that, so it doesn't. It will look a bit weird. Um, but it's coming out. It it, will, it won't look quite right. Because it should be just like a kind of a sharp cutoff, not like it doesn't shouldn't round off like that. So if you're using the auto rounding method, the second method works for getting around that rounding. And so what you want to do is make a black. You do a black solid. Set to screen. I think yeah. Wait no. Yes. Yeah, I, I think that's right. And so you got a black solid over your core, and then you draw your mask on it. And no, it should be normal, not screen. And you want to put that ab that above the layer, above the adjustment layer that does the adjustment, does the blurring and all that. So that way it won't be affected by the um, rounding. So then you can change the mask feather, and that will soften it up and make it, you know, not look weird. You see, it looks a lot. It looks nice. It doesn't have that weird rounding going on with it. So, um, let's see. And masks, like, handling like that, you know, handling it as an obscurance like this is basically more or less the same for actually rotoscoping a lightsaber because it de depending upon how long it is behind someone you have to move this mask along so it doesn't like uh so it doesn't like so it stays play it stays in place and everything so i'm going to move this over it's safe so, um, is there one other thing? I feel like there's one other thing. Whoops, not over there. Um. God, that's gonna annoy me. I feel like there's, like, one more thing to bring up, but I don't remember what it could be. Um. Oh, there we go. Okay, yeah. Flickering. Blade flickering. So, it's not really noticeable during, like, motion like this, like, when it's moving. But if, like, if your dude's just, like, standing there for a while, not really moving all that much, you want to have the blade be pulsing. So, to do that, you go up, new solid, make it white. Yep, comp, comp. And make sure it's above, uh, it's above your above your glow and all that. You want to do it where the glows are and not in the core layer because it won't really come through on the core. So anyway, you set the solid to classic color dodge. You set the opacity to zero. 
then scrub through to where scrubs in this case we're scrubbing through to when his lightsaber goes off screen. Actually wait. You wanna set a keyframe first after you set it to zero and then go to where it goes off screen or whatever. Hit that. And then select those keyframes and go up to the wiggler. I have it set up here, but you should be able to access it through Yeah, you can bring it up in the wind on the window drop down and it's right there at the bottom. So then you set it to you want to change the frequency and magnitude. I usually do like about 20 per second, a magnitude of 16. And then apply, and that'll add keyframes between those keyframes you selected. So when you come back to it, the lightsaber will be flickering. It's not noticeable here because, you know, he's moving. But if I come back around over to here, come on. Come on, twirl that down, thank you. So, that goes off frame. And then it just comes back on frame. Ha <laughs> ha. Magic. So then we come back over to here. And, as you can see, uh, well, it didn't last very long because we only did to a certain point. But you can see it, it flashed for a moment. Um, I can just like dra or drag it out this far here, a little further. Do about the same thing. Still twenty and sixteen. So then you can see how it pulsates like that. Now, now that's all well and good, but I I don't on a, unfortunately offhand I don't remember how to do it. I'd have to open. Um, I have to open that up to check how to do it. But there's a way to make it pulse regularly instead of erratically like that. I like to um, I like to do that for red lightsabers for the errat the um steady pulse instead of the erratic pulse. Um, I wonder if I can remember how it's done. I don't think I can. I don't think I do remember. Um, well, here, okay. I want to show you guys, so I'm going to open up the, uh, com the project with, that I've been working on. It's going to take a little bit to load. It's not going to take what it says here because it uh, it lies. It's going to take. It's not going to take this long. It's just loading up a bunch of stuff. Okay, so let's see. Where is? Okay. Uh, scroll all the way up through this nonsense. Okay, here we go. Go visit old Darth Vader here. So, okay, there we go. So on for his lightsaber, it pulses regularly. It doesn't pulse erratically. It, that was. It's a pretty short shot here, so it's hard to see, but. Uh, I believe the, uh, oh, come here. I believe it's the principle is about the same, but let me see if I can remember how to pull this off. So you, you need this. So if I, yeah, I know, screw you. So I believe if, you know, I set this to zero, I think. Um, then do a keyframe there. 
then oh wait oh, if I think if I have it at eight percent have it at eight percent or so and then I have another one that's like about four frames later at like three and what this expression will do is so I hold hit alt I hold alt and click on the stopwatch and then paste that in what that should do is it should loop what that should do is that'll loop these two keyframes indefinitely. So you know it starts at eight and goes to three and whatever. So but if oh yeah, quit your whinging. So if I like did it like um if I started at like maybe like sixteen percent and then Set that there, then went to like uh, I don't know, like six percent, and then put that back in. It, yeah, it's a little. It's not easy to see because it moves. It's a really short shot, but. It's kind. Of, it can be kind of seen. Actually, I think a little bit later, there's a shot where he's just kind of standing there, so it's a little bit more evident. Yeah, there we go. And this is a shot where I used the saber plugin because uh, his lightsaber did not have a prop in this shot. So. Let me cycle back through so again it's a little it's not easy to see but you can kind of see how it's uh how it's pulsing like that so it's fortunately very that's fortunately very simple to do is just two keyframes spread however far apart with just two values so it's like 16 or 16 to 6 or whatever and then with this expression right here, it'll loop those keyframes indefinitely for as long as the layer is there. So, like if I truncated it about here, that's how far that would last. And I saved that. Damn it. Damn my reflexes. Um... But also, I think uh, the way I had set it up also is you can, if you right click on the keyframe, there's a keyframe assistant, and there's the easy ease. And what that will do, I think, is uh, keep it from being too harsh, being too, and being too sharp looking. So if I go back to that, um, shot where he had his lightsaber on it may look a little different but it might not be that evident yeah I mean, it, it's it's there yeah it shows up so but um yeah that's pretty much that's about how that works so <clears throat> fortunately it's pretty simple not too crazy I wonder if I did... Yeah, that's how it was. I set that to easy ease, not just easy is in, easy ease in or out. So, but, um, I think that should probably about cover it for that. Um, uh, anyway, but, yeah, I think that, yeah, that should about cover it for how, how this whole sort of thing works. Um, uh, ignition, and, oh yeah, ignitions and retractions, that's, that's something. Um, yeah, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna save this. I mean, I've already screwed up once, so why not? So I'm gonna go back to our previous thingy. And ignitions and retractions with the saber plugin is very simple. Um, there's a, there's settings in there, the offsets that control how it's done. 
with the mask, it's basically the same. It's pretty simple. It's just, you know, you start at the bottom. You start close to the hill, like so. And then, uh, it depends upon how you want the ignition to be done. Uh, lightsabers, it seems, have, like, three speeds. There's the, the, um, nice and easy, slow ignition. And then there's sort of a faster one. And then there's just the instant one, where it's just, like, boot. Where it's just, like, no blade and then blade. So, it really depends upon the circumstances of your project and movie and whatever that, uh, for whether or not you want it to extend ca extend smoothly and slowly or, or a little, a bit faster, or just, like, bam, bam. And so, but I think that really sh I think that should be it. That should cover it. So, um, I guess, well, thank, I guess that's, that should really about do it then. So, uh, thanks to those who stopped by, and if, uh, I don't know what I might do next time, maybe blasters, blaster shots or something like that, who knows. And with blaster shots, it's really all that, not that much different. It's just, um, Although there is one other approach I do uh, have for, like, if you're doing a lot of shots in one scene or something like that. But that would be a stream for another day. So, but um, today, thanks for stopping by, and hopefully you learned something. Whether or not you'll actually use it, that's really down to you. So, um, until next time, uh, have a good one, and hopefully... Uh, and we'll see you next time. And yeah, whoops, whoops. Uh. <laughs>